It's Sandra here from Create in Spain. If all has gone well, I've just completed a short video on my camera showing the silver bullet. I apologise in advance for the camera work because it's very difficult for me to concentrate on what I'm seeing through my camera screen, what I'm trying to do in the way of pressing buttons, trying to talk at the same time. Uh, I'm not cut out for this. I'm really not. Anyway, I've decided I would uh, give you a little bit of information for, for those people who don't have a silver bullet and are thinking, mm, would I want one, would I not want one? So I've been trying to sort of do a comparison really between um, the popular cameo portrait and the silver bullet and some of the differences that you are not so used to. And this is just part of, of that and the intention is it's going to go onto my blog as one complete article when I've done the entire lot. It may take me a couple of days. Okay, so I've got a shape here and I'm in Sure Cuts a lot, which it comes with the Silver Bullet. This is version 4. And I've just drawn a simple shape. In fact, it was one that came out of a font. So here it is on a mat. Now what would I do if I wanted to do a print and cut? All I have to do is go to the cutter button up here and it says cut the cutter and it comes up and we have several different things here. This simply tells me the general thing about my cutter, what cutter I'm using because some people use more than one and maybe you cut in with something else. This tells me the cut mode and at the moment it's on what you see is what you get. And we have cut selection only, which would cut solely that, even if there were other things on the mat. There's a box which says use software speed and pressure, which I have not checked because I don't want to use the software speed and pressure. And mirroring, which you might want to do, particularly if you're doing vinyl lettering or something like that. There are presets to be used in the same way that there are with the Silhouette Cameo, but they are presets that you set yourself. And I set a few, but not very many. And to be honest, I will probably end up adjusting those anyway. Now it tells me what I've got in the holder. I tell it what I've got in the holder more to the point, which happens to be a blade. And you could be doing cut cut lines or cut cut and draw lines, various things. We're just going to ignore that. The blade offset again, we're going to ignore because unless you are doing something which has a very different blade in it, you just leave it well alone. And you leave the overcut alone. And the multi cut, I don't want to be on at the moment, but you can go up to five times on the same thing if you so wish. Now the speed is set here at 300, but I've got my machine set at the standard, which is 500. It does go up to 800, but it's only on five. And you can ignore this because my machine is, use, is not using the software speed and pressure anyway. But I would want to press print and cut. But at the moment I want to cancel that because I want to show you but if you go to the preview, you can click various checkboxes and it will show you the cut lines and the print and cut registration marks. Now you'll see that my registration marks are here. And they are not at the outer corners of the page. And that is one of the real differences. The registration marks are linked to the objects that you are cutting and not to the page. So you know, if you've only got one little item on a page, then you do not need to have your registration marks up at the far corners. They will automatically be put a certain distance from the edge of your design. That's the way it works. So that bit is quite different. Now again, if I go to the cutter, I would then choose print and cut. And it will come up with this box. Now. I'm assuming that I have sent it to the printer 
and it's come back and I've put it on my mat. Now the thing with um, this as opposed to a cameo silhouette, it doesn't make any difference where this is on this mat here because I can choose to have it wherever I want on the mat. I can put the paper to the left, to the right, it doesn't make any difference because I'm the one who tells it where the registration marks are. And we do this with a silver bullet with a laser. So if I click the next button, what it's doing here is it's telling me, take the laser and center it over the top left marker. So we'll assume that I've done that. And I then go to next and it tells me to center it on the top right marker. And then it tells me to center it on the bottom right marker. When I do that and I press this button, it will then cut it. So I don't need to have a big sheet of paper on there. I could have just a small piece of paper or I could have a big sheet. It doesn't make any difference. As long as it's big enough to have the registration marks on, it makes no difference to this machine whatsoever. And I'm going to cancel that out because I'm not actually going to cut anything at the moment. For mat size, there are several mat sizes that you can choose from. But unless you are using what you see is what you get, as long as the mat size is bigger than your paper, you can use any mat size you like. It doesn't make any difference. It really doesn't. Okay, so that is a major difference. Uh, what other real differences are there? Um, probably quite a few. Um, <laughs> they're not coming to mind at the moment. This machine, I would say, takes more getting used to than a silhouette cameo or portrait. But if you have had one of those, it's not going to take you forever to get used to it. It would be more difficult if you were starting off and you'd had absolutely nothing to do with cutting machines in the first place. But it's not that scary. Just take it easy, take it simply to start with. I had mine on Christmas Day and it's only the 12th of January and I'm happily confident that I can do anything that I want to do on it. Now using the software might be slightly another matter. There are still things which I think, no, how does it do this or how does it do that? But I can always work in other software work in SVG and just import it and cut it in this so it's really not that much of a problem. A lot of people who have silver bullets um, use Inkscape but there are other programs that you can use. There are programs for the iPad that you can use to make SVGs so yeah you're not short of software uh, choices. I will say that one of the other things that you will notice, or you may have noticed, I don't know if you did notice, but you may have noticed. And I'll just go back into the print and cut menu again. And there's a calibrate laser button, and this is a very important one. You only ever have to do it once for your machine. Once you've got it calibrated, that's it, done, dusted, you know, over. Unless, and this is the unless, um, you use another sort of blade holder that doesn't position the blade in exactly the same way. Because what you do to calibrate the laser is you do a test cut, and I'm not going to go through it, it's, it's easy enough to do. It makes a cut on your paper, and it then says to you, right, get the laser and put the laser in the centre of that cut, and tell me that it's in the centre, which you do. And what that does is it tells the machine exactly how far it is from the laser to the center of your blade. And once it knows that, every print and cut you do, if you center it properly on the, uh, the spots on the corner that you get with the registration marks, if you center it on that, every single print and cut you do will be perfect. Isn't that lovely to know? But you only calibrate it the once. You do not need to do it again. 
in fact I've just changed my blade holder and I checked with a print and cut my print and cut was perfect I didn't even have to recalibrate it for a new blade holder so not a problem it's not a complicated process it's very simple the software talks you through it and it's done within five minutes not a problem at all okay I hope that helps you I'm going to do some writing now for the blog try and explain a few things maybe that I didn't explain very well maybe put some photographs in let's see if I can complete this little trilogy thanks very much for watching bye bye